This entire build series is brought to you by Northridge 4x4. If you're in the market for anything for your Jeep, make sure you check out Northridge. And if you want to save up to an additional 20%, make sure you use coupon code DIRTLIFESTYLE at checkout. I'm heating up the shop because we've got a bunch of stuff to paint today, a bunch of stuff to install today. We're even going to break out the welder and make some small changes for some parts on our Jeep Gladiator. That's better. Now you can hear me. So I've been heating up the shop. I've got this diesel heater and I have a, uh, another heater over there going. You might hear in the background, it's my wood burning stove. So we've got to paint right away. I want to paint because this stuff takes a little bit to cure. We're not going to do a full paint tutorial or anything. I've already covered that very thoroughly in a video, but we've got some paint from a company called Seymour. They sent over a bunch of stuff. This is supposed to be almost as durable as um as powder coat it's supposed to be like one step below powder coat and supposedly one can has the same coverage as four cans of normal spray paint so what we're going to do today is we are going to clean up these bumpers really good make sure there's no oil or anything on them we're going to paint the insides of the bumper first so we're going to start with gray we're just going to do gray primer and then after like 15, 20 minutes, we're gonna throw some really heavy coats of gloss black. They sent me some other stuff too. Aluma Blast, we'll be using that in a future video. And what else do we have here? Cast iron gray finish, we'll use that in a future video. And then I've got some truck bed coating. What I'm gonna do for sure is paint the inside black. We might do the outside in truck bed coating, but I haven't decided yet. I do, I also just like a nice smooth black finish. But at the very least, we need to clean this up. I'm gonna fire up uh, the heater again, make sure it's nice and warm in here because it's cold outside, and we're gonna get to painting. The first thing you need to do with any paint project is prep. You've gotta prep your surface, otherwise the paint simply will not stick. So I use either denatured alcohol or acetone, or sometimes I'll go out and I'll buy this spray that is like a paint prep spray that you just spray on super thick, and it really helps to dissolve that oil. Well, we don't have that today, so we're gonna use some denatured alcohol. I like to wipe everything down really good once, blow it out with an air nozzle, wipe it all down again, and then blow it all out with an air nozzle for a second time. Once everything's clean, I spray with a coat of primer, nice and light, and then 15 minutes later, I come back and I go with a lot heavier coat of primer. 20 minutes after that, I'll come back and I'll do my first coat, and in this case, my only coat of top cover. The lady from Seymour that I talked to at SEMA said to give this paint 48 hours of cure time, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. 48 hours of cure time on the inside, and then 48 hours of cure time on the outside. Check out the finish from that truck bed coating. It looks so dang good. <laughs> I'm laughing because I've used like every truck bed coating on the market. Um, and my best luck honestly has been with the Rust-Oleum as far as like a spray, like out of a can. But this lays down better than all of them. Like this lays down so smooth. There's no like shiny spots or anything like that. It just looks perfect. So anyway, very happy with that. Now we need to install these bumpers. And then once we get the bumpers installed, I kind of have to go wheeling in this truck tomorrow. And then when we get back, we are going to build a tire, tire carrier mount. We're gonna modify our sliders. There's a whole bunch more work, but we have to make a little snow wheeling trip in the middle of this video. Removing stock bumpers is pretty much the same for any truck you buy these days. You just remove all the electrical components first, make sure that you take care of all these little clips and stuff that hold all your wiring up, and then you start removing all the bolts that hold the bumper on. It's pretty obvious once you get underneath there what needs to come off and what needs to stay, so you just remove anything you need to in order to pull all this out of the way so you can install the new bumper. There is one small exception here where I need to cut a little tab off of the top of the factory tow hitch in order to clear this new rear bumper, but other than that, this is the same as every rear bumper I've ever replaced on any vehicle I've owned. These 
bumpers are from a company called Motobilt. The rear one went together just as fast as it looked. I mean, it's just as simple as pull the plastic one off, put the steel one on, everything lined up exactly as it should, and now I'm left with a big upgrade in looks and strength. So, with the rear bumper mounted, we can move on to the front and finally get a winch on this truck. Do a little problem. Apparently, this winch doesn't work with this fairlead mount for this bumper. It's uh, it's just not the right profile. The ends of this winch are giant, and they got these big old ribs and stuff. So what happens is that they run into this, and then we run out of hole, and we can't put bolts all the way through it. I, there's nothing online about this, so for those of you that are interested in this bumper and this winch combo, great bumper, great winch. They don't want to work together um, unless you get a different fairly mount, or in my case, I'm going to build an aluminum spacer because I think that if I space this up enough, uh, and this is like three-eighths or so, if I give it three-eighths space, it'll make it to where this part right here shouldn't contact that part right there so bad. And hopefully, I mean, this this winch came with some extra long bolts in case you need them. So that's plan A. So we'll, we'll try plan A. Hopefully I can get this bad boy mounted. I could definitely just grind this fair lead mount to make room for the winch, but the more material I remove, the less structural integrity it's gonna have. So what I'm gonna try to do is hopefully just use the spacers, but at the very least, use the spacers in conjunction with the smallest amount of grinding possible to make everything clear and make it to where I can mount this up and go snow wheeling tomorrow. The rest of the install is exactly like the rear bumper. Just put all the bolts back where they go, bolt this new steel bumper in place of the OEM bumper, and then all I need to do is hook up the winch. Red to red, black to black, it's really that simple. One final tip on winch installs is sometimes you've gotta feed some wires through a tight engine bay. So I use a little bit of solder, a little bit of electrical tape, I feed it down, I then attach it to the wire, pull it up, and then hook up power and ground. That was a fun snow trip. We found deep snow. We The Gladiator performed beautifully. We had a little bit of a debacle at the end. If you're curious about that trip, I will link it at the end of this video uh, so you can see how the Gladiator did in the snow. Now, moving on, how about these bumpers? They look so good, in my opinion, but the the taste, clearly the taste of the designers at Moto Built are very, very similar to my own because when I build bumpers in the shop from scratch, they end up looking very similar to this. Um, so. Perfect fit and finish, outstanding quality. Moving on, we've got a set of skid plates that we need to mount in this bad boy. And we have a little bit of an issue. There's definitely gonna be some modification here, so we're gonna be breaking out the welder today. But the skids, in my opinion, are the most important part of any Gladiator build. And that's because one of the strengths is its wheelbase. If you're going to a place like Moab, a long wheelbase is nice on that really steep stuff. But once you crest, and then you've gotta come back down, you're gonna be hitting that belly on obstacles because it has a long wheelbase. So we wanna make sure we protect everything that's under there. There's an expensive transfer case, there's expensive exhaust components. The emission stuff under here is insane because it's diesel. We wanna make sure that we don't have to replace that and we wanna make it more capable. And with a set of nose to tail skids like these ones from Motobilt, make it to where whenever you go over a rock or something, it's just gonna slide because the way they have it designed, not even a bolt head is hanging down. It's just a nice slippery surface for you to slide the belly of the Jeep over an obstacle, making it much more capable. And it's gonna make it to where you can protect the expensive junk that they mount underneath the bottom of these rigs. 
That being said, we're gonna add weight. It's just the way it is. And also, I, I got these way before there was an option for a diesel. So now Metal Cloak has a skid system nose to tail for the JLD, or sorry, the JT diesel. So if you're not someone who likes to fabricate on brand new stuff, then I would just order that. But if you've got the 3.6 gas, Motobuilt has you covered. So these are for the 3.6 gas. There's no doubt we're gonna have to do a little bit of modification in order to make it work for the three liter diesel. So today we will definitely be breaking out the welder, but I'm gonna start with what I think is the low hanging fruit. I assume the center section should bolt up just the same, the center section of this skid system. And then we'll just start to work our way out from there and see what kind of problems we run across. I made a pretty big mistake here. I underestimated how different the belly would be between the gas and the diesel version. But once I started unbolting things and I started looking at the dimensions of everything, I was like, okay, they're similar, but clearly I would have to modify every piece of this kit. Whereas originally I was thinking I just modify the engine portion and I'm a fabricator. I mean, I could build all this from scratch if I wanted to, but I don't see the point. The whole reason of owning one of these trucks is that you can bolt things on quickly instead of doing what I do with my other things and spend like a year trying to build them. So what I, I got a hold of Northridge and apparently there's a few options that we have in terms of other companies that make skids for these. So I'm gonna send these back to Northridge because they're uninstalled, they're, they're brand new, they're ready to rock and roll for the right vehicle. And then they're gonna send me out a set that are gonna bolt right into this Gladiator. So. For now, we are gonna table the skid plate install. The good thing is I'm just going in snow for the next couple months, so I don't need them too soon. Instead, we're gonna build a custom tire mount. We have a deck system in here. I wanna mount the spare tire right on top of it. Uh, and I think I'm gonna anchor it into the bed too, cause I want it to be pretty secure. So I'm gonna clean this up and we're gonna get started on that. After getting things cleaned up in the shop, I decided to take these parts and pieces back to Northridge because I just don't need them in the shop, especially when they need to figure out a way to repackage this stuff and sell it to someone who can actually use it. Then it was time to figure out how complicated I really need to make this tire carrier. And originally I had a big plan with a bunch of dimple dies and stuff, but once I started to put pen to paper, I realized really quickly that this could be done super simply. This is tacky still, but it's good enough to install. My original plan had dimple dies. I was gonna build this big, beautiful bracket. And once I started to cut cardboard, I realized, man, this is so unnecessary. It's going under a tire. Let's make it simple. So that's what I did here. This is a universal tire mounting kit from Barnes four wheel drive. It has a bunch of different bolt hole patterns and stuff in it to make it to where you can mount it on like any tire or any wheel bolt pattern you can find, which is awesome. In fact, I ordered a couple more from Barnes this morning because I love having this kind of thing on hand. So that with some scrap, 30 minutes of work, we're ready to rock and roll. I like that kind of project. Next part, bear with me folks. This could be controversial, I promise. I'm gonna mount it to the deck system with riv nuts. So I've had a tire just sitting back there for three weeks. Bunch of off-road, bunch of on-road. It has not budged a single inch. It is in the exact same location that I put it three weeks ago. That said, the reason we're doing this in the first place is when we go on some like really bouncy stuff and I need to like go fast off-road, 
I just don't want this tire to slowly like vibrate its way around the bed. I don't think it would ever come out unless I was like rolling over. Um, but I don't want it to vibrate around. That's all this mount is for. This, this is just to keep it from moving around in the future whenever I go over like really bumpy terrain or something like that. However, I've got a plan B. If, if in a month or two, this starts to pull out a little bit and like I can rock the tire, then what I'll do is I'll just pull all of them out and uh, I'll just use hardware, bolt it all the way through. I'll just give my kids a wrench and a nut. I'll send them underneath to help daddy. <laughs> and then I'll just bolt it down with like nuts and washers squishing together on top of that deck system. So that's plan B, but I don't think it's necessary. So we're just gonna do the easy way for now and we'll see what happens. I don't love plan A, so it's time to deploy plan B. It's in there, it's better than not having a mount under it. However, once I started to drill into this plastic and I realized how soft it is, I realized that I need some fat fender washers underneath there and we're just gonna put bolts all the way through. Even though it's gonna be kind of a chore because I gotta get my son under there, uh, it's definitely gonna be the best way to do this. Plus, come on, whose kid wouldn't wanna crawl underneath a deck system like this whenever he was helping me install it he was crawling underneath there anyway so i'm gonna go grab him and we're gonna do this the right way installing this deck system in the gladiator was a really nice father-son project so when i told my son that i needed a little bit of help working on it he couldn't get his winter clothes on fast enough and working with a four-year-old takes a little bit of patience you're explaining him the basics of what nuts bolts and washers are but at the end of the day this is very worth it and he loves doing this stuff with me and it's memories that we're both gonna have forever you know what these are right it's a bolt and a washer. Okay, so I need you to go under there. Go under there. Go under there, and you're gonna put the bolt with the washer up from the bottom like this, okay? You see it? Uh -huh, I see wood. You dead? Almost. I got one more left. Yep, one more left. So when you push it through, I'm putting a rubber washer on it. So when it rains, it's gonna help keep the rain from getting down in there. Does that make sense? Oh, to keep this food for our bag. Yeah, so our food and stuff doesn't get wet when mom uses the drawers for groceries. Oh, okay. I need to tighten these nuts down, but I need you to go back underneath there and hold the bottom of the, the bolt so it doesn't spin, okay? Oh. Does that and sound good? Put your nut on and I'm gonna it? put it on there, but I need you to hold it from the bottom. You ready? Uh-huh. Here we go. You okay? Here we go. Good job. You okay? I'm glad we did it the right way. I'm much more confident in the way that it's set up now. We still have riv nuts. We have four riv nuts and then we have four bolts that are going through with fat fender washers on bottom. Plus my son got to come out and slide up underneath here <laughs> and he likes helping dad in the garage. So the next thing we're gonna work on is gonna be, well, the last thing we're gonna work on actually is gonna be this really cool system that like mounts on the inside of the Gladiator. This is a system from a company called Anvil Overland and it's basically a rod that goes across and it makes it to where you can mount, you know, GoPros, tablets, phones, whatever you want, which to me, I've, I've, for me, I've got a lot of accessories like that. So we're gonna mount that system in here and get it to where when my wife goes and drives this, she has a place to put her phone now. And whenever I take it off road, I've got a place to put the tablet to keep us on the trail. But actually, before we do that, this shop is an absolute mess. I'm gonna tidy up real quick and then we're gonna do this install. I went a little crazy with my organizing 
And I completely redid the whole back of the shop and I even changed out one truck for another. And we'll talk about the Toyota at the end of this video. So don't worry, I know it's there. <laughs> Let's talk about Anvil Overland. Anvil Overland is the maker of this kit. Uh, this is 100% made and machined and everything here in America. The owner is an aerospace guy. He didn't like the stuff that was on the market for his Jeep Wrangler uh, as, in terms of like accessory mounting and all that. And so he decided to make his own kit. A bunch of his friends saw it and said, dude, I want one of those too. And an American small business is born. I love it. This is a great story. So what we're gonna do is we are going to pop off a couple of little covers. We're gonna thread these in to like the grab handles and then we're gonna bolt all this together and we're gonna have this super clean way to mount all the accessories on this Jeep. I just need to decide whether or not I want the rod to be blue or red. My main goal with this Gladiator build series was to keep it as beginner friendly as possible. And I think that everything that we've installed in this video especially has been very much for the beginner. But if you're uncomfortable installing your own bumpers or winch or whatever, I highly recommend you at least install this kit from Anvil Overland. This is probably the easiest thing I've ever installed. And if you've got any mechanical knowledge at all, or you can build Ikea furniture, you can definitely install this yourself. It's funny how much more stuff it looks like when it's right in front of you like that. But this is all stuff that used to just float around the cab for me. And in fact, here we go. Radio, I, it would constantly end up under seats and stuff, but now we have a place to put it, place to put the phone. I imagine that's what, the phone mount is the one that's gonna get used the most. And then uh, every time I'm off road, I do not leave without good maps. So if you guys are interested in a kit like this, you can go to Anvil Overland's website and they actually did give us a coupon code. So I think it's like 10% off if you use coupon code Dirt Lifestyle. Let's talk about that Yoda. I wanna blast through this ending as fast as possible. That is gear sets and an axle truss or two axle trusses for this Jeep Gladiator. This thing is almost complete. The only thing we need to do is build these axles and I'm waiting for chromoly shafts. So it's not gonna get built yet. The good thing is these are so capable with the little bit of mods that we've done. I mean, I haven't touched the axles and it still drives down the highway like a brand new truck. So the J10, the J10 is outside under a tarp. The J10 will get worked on in 2022 but it is going to be a giant undertaking because everything that I'm gonna to do to it is gonna be completely hand fabricated from scratch. So it's gonna be like a six month build, seriously. So what I'm trying to do is knock out the quick projects. This is the quickest project ever. This is gonna be a pretty quick project too. It'll take like, I'm guessing about two months, but this is gonna be a real rock crawler. Everything this Gladiator can do, this Tacoma is gonna be able to do. We start on it next week. It's getting 38 inch black label stickies. It is gonna be seven inches wider than stock. This is gonna be a wild rock crawling Tacoma. It's gonna be dope. And if you go to King of the Hammers, you're gonna see it in person. So this is gonna be my rock crawler for a bit. And then when we go as a family, that's gonna be our rock crawler. And then we're gonna finally tackle this thing. So I'm waiting on a couple parts on this and then we can start doing the engine build. So the next couple months, you're gonna see a lot of Tacoma. You're gonna see a lot of trailer. And if you watch the adventure videos, you're gonna see a lot of the Gladiator. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, like, follow, subscribe, all that stuff. You wanna help support the channel, you go to thedirtlifestyle.com. Get a hat, get a t-shirt, get whatever. Uh, we also have a link to our Patreon account on there as well. So all the wheeling videos you've been seeing me do with our Patreon people, we're trying to do those once a month now. So if you wanna come wheeling with me, join that community. If you wanna follow me on social media, I'm at Nate. We'll see you next time.